This video is going to talk about movement of current water boats, whatever kind of boat you've got going, whether it's a paddle boat, a canoe, a motor boat, you're in a river, you're trying to get across to the other side and you have some sort of current affecting your movement. So let's take a look at what happens. Think about it like just logically first, because some of these calculations are really basic and you're overthinking them. So let's say this is my paddleboard guy and this is all a river and the current is going down the page here. So down river, that's the way currents usually go. The currents don't go up river. Okay, so let's say I'm in my paddleboard and I the water is still, there's no current and I go across and I can go straight across river just like that. So my speed is going to be whatever my speed is when I can paddle in calm water. And in this case, it was five kilometers an hour. Now, when there is a current, if I try to go straight across, what happens is the current pushes me down this way. And I end up not landing straight across the river. I even went off the page there, didn't I? So I don't end up landing right across the river, which is where I wanted to go in this example. So in order for me to go across straight, I have to point my board up so that I'm actually going like this. I'm pointing the board upwards and the current, which is pushing this way, is making me go straight across the water. Whereas when I was going straight across, it was pushing me down this way. So your resultant, if you want your resultant to be straight across, then you have a different type of calculation than if you don't care where the water current takes you, where are you going to land? Okay, so let's do some calculations with this to try to make it all very clear to you. So. We'll draw this one that is the question that was posed by one of my viewers. And certainly if you have something that's bothering you, let me know. Now, my writing is very crooked today. I think, you know what they say, if you write uphill, you're a very positive person. It's definitely me. Okay, so we have a 400 meter wide river. There's the river from here to here. And I'm going across the river like this. And it says, if you steer your canoe in a direction perpendicular to the current. So the current is going this way, right? So perpendicular to it is straight across. And you can paddle five kilometers an hour in still water. Determine your resultant. So obviously, as you're going across this current that's going this way at two kilometers per hour is going to blow you this way. So it's really five to two, so I'm kind of off a bit here. Let's say it's a, kind of like that. So this is my resultant here, my resultant vector. So I had this 400 meters is irrelevant to this part of the question. I'm only talking about velocity. So you're going to have a velocity triangle and you're going to have a distance triangle. So even though this is 400, I'm just going to take it off here right now so it's not too con fuse you as to why we have that number there. We're going to say this is five kilometers per hour. If I was going across, I'd go five kilometers an hour if it was still, but I'm being pushed down the river and have a new resultant here, the sum of these two vectors. Now, as you can see, this resultant is a hypotenuse, which means I'm going to go faster. Just like I said, the water is pushing you. And if you were going straight, you'd be going just strictly seven kilometers an hour this way. So the first thing they want to know is what is your resultant velocity? Okay, so my resultant velocity is, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem here. That's all I need because I have five, I have two, and I'm trying to find r. So r squared, which is the hypotenuse, make sure you know which one is hypotenuse so you're not adding when you should be subtracting. So five squared plus two squared. So the resultant velocity is the square root of 29, which is approximately 
5.39 kilometers per hour. Okay, so that makes sense, right? This is, you're going faster. It's not a lot faster, two kilometers per hour. The other question says, um, where will you land? Like, what is this point? So that goes back to the other triangle, which is we've got 400 this way, 400 meters this way. And I'm trying to find out how long this is here. Like, I want to know how long is this line here? So if you look, these triangles are similar because they have a right angle. We're going the same. The angle here is still going to be the same. This theta here is still going to be the same theta as I have here. So I have a similar triangles, similar triangles. So I can say that um, 2 is to 5. So 2 is to 5 we'll call this x, as x is to 400. It's that simple. So x is going to be 400 times 2 is 800 divided by 5 is 160 meters. So this is 160 meters. That's how far down you are away from a point directly across. So you have to describe that well. Where will your canoe land? on the opposite side of the river, it will land 160 meters downriver from a point directly across from where you started. So your boat started over here. Okay, so I know that. Now if I wanted to know, and this wasn't part of this question, but what if I want to know how long it was going to take me to get here? Well, if I want to know how long this little ride of mine was, I need to know the distance traveled. Right? What is this distance here? So that's just going to be Pythagorean theorem again. 400 squared plus 160 squared. So this distance, let's call it um, R because it's our resultant. So R is going to be um, the square root of 400 squared plus 160 squared. And that's going to give me a distance of I get about 430.8 meters. So this is 430.8 meters from here to here. Now if I want to know how long that took me, how long, these are all the same thing, right? You have to find resultants, make sure you're using your velocity vectors, distance, you can use special triangles, you could have also used the tangent, it would also have worked find the tan of this, find this theta, find this theta, find this length, right? So how long means distance divided by speed gives me time. So if I want to know how long this was going to take, I'd say, well, he went 430.8 meters, meters, divided by the speed, which is 5.39 kilometers per hour and of course that's 0 0.43 let's make it 431 divided by 5.39 right so distance I have to put it into kilometers divide by thousand so I get the time is about um, 4.8 minutes which is 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Remember, you just take this and multiply it by 60 minutes to seconds. So that's how you would do this question. Now let's do the second part that was asked, <coughs> which said, suppose you want to travel straight across the river. Determine the resultant velocity and time it will take to cross the river. Okay, so we have the same situation. I'm trying to go straight across the river. But this is my resultant, right? I want this to be the resultant. I want to go here. But I'm going this way. I have to go up on an angle like this. That's a little overreacting here. But to go down this way. <coughs> so I have a two kilometer an hour current. My speed is five kilometers per hour in still water. What's my resultant velocity? 
Well, I can find this angle first of all. Let's call it theta again. So theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta would be 2 over 5. And theta is approximately equal to, I got 23.6 degrees. Okay, shift, sine, 2 divided by 5, bam. So I know my angle here. So that's my direction. So it's 23.6 degrees north of a line perpendicular to the current. Okay, so I know which the what the direction is. is what's the resultant velocity? So the resultant velocity now is going to be... Now watch, this is my hypotenuse, so I want the square root of 5 squared minus 2 squared, or the square root of 21. And that's going to give me about 4.58 kilometers per hour. And the question says... How long is this going to take you? How long is it going to take you to get there? So I need, again, I need to figure out what the distance traveled is. So I know the distance traveled is going to be the resultant distance here. So I have this, right? So this was 400 meters. And I went off on this angle like this and came back here. So this resultant speed of 4.58 kilometers an hour is going to give me, um, I'm going to divide this distance divided by this speed, 4.58 kilometers per hour. So time, again, make sure you have a distance, 400 meters, divided by the speed, 4.58 kilometers per hour. And that's going to be 0 0.4 divided by 4.58. And that's going to give you, um, I get in hours, I get 0 0.08729, something like that. I always leave all the numbers in my calculator that I have. And then you multiply that by 60 to get the minutes. So it comes up to 5.24 minutes, and you would multiply this by 60, just this part of it, right? Just the fraction of the minutes to give you the seconds. So I get 5 minutes, 14 seconds. Okay, so that's all you need to know about anything going across the water with a current. And basically, it's the same thing in the air, right? Except, you know, you have the same angles, you have... A wind, you have an air, air speed, you have a ground speed, which is your resultant. Okay, so hope that helps you. Uh, thanks for the question. And don't forget to subscribe. Tell all your friends. Give them the advantage to get my numbers up. Makes me happy. Keeps me going. Thanks for the question. Bye.